Hi, this is uh, Bernard Brault with OTN Systems. Um, so uh, this is a video, uh, part of a video series I'm doing on showing you how to use Xtran and configuring a, a, a network. So here's the uh, a picture of the network. And uh, in the past, what, what, I've, what I did is I created some tunnels and now I'm going to create a service. So let's say, for example, that um, the control center is at node 1120 right here. That would be the primary control center. And somehow far away in the network, you know, deep down across multiple sites and rings and so on, that you need to create a service to, let's say, uh, node uh, 5010 right here. And that's got to be a 20 meg Ethernet service between two sites. I'll show you how to do this. Uh, so first and foremost is that uh, on MPLS, you need to have tunnels to get across. In MPLS TP, you need to have a tunnel to get across. You cannot just like Ethernet uh, tie... Uh, uh, I basically connect the uh, the port there and everybody's participating in the same LAN it's very so the traffic is segregated and tunnels is the way to do it just like STS was for Sonnet and VTs and so on and the uh, MPLS uh, world it's LSPs and, and, and tunnels which are bi-directional LSPs by the way uh, so uh, basically what's interesting here is that uh, I have uh, sort of a, um, a main a ring that's highlighted let me let me remove the highlight so in order to interconnect there from here to here uh, I already have the tunnels created and I, what I plan to do is use three of them uh, first one being the main ring right there and I plan to like uh, traverse this blue ring go across the purple one right there the uh, light blue and then jump in a multi-point tie site here and here's the tie right there and in order to reach this one, I'm going to jump into ring ring number five. All right, and this is going to be done through virtual forwarding instances in these uh, between these different uh, rings. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and create the service, and uh, let's give it a fancy name and let's call it uh, 20 meg Ethernet. All right, 20 meg Ethernet. Okay, so uh, it's uh, port base. It could be VLAN base, but let's leave it uh, port base. And uh, so let's say at the control center, now we're going to take uh, this particular port right there and go to, as I discussed before, this port right here. All right, so the ports are selected. As you can see, the selection is also shown right here in the uh, uh, table. So it's uh, node 1120, the control center, interface 3, port 4. And if I go down here, I see that it's node 5010, interface 3, port 4. So whatever selection I did right here, as you can see, that's the same thing as doing the actual port selection visually. So let's re reselect this. All right, so the next step, is to actually um, select the tunnels and that's the uh, purpose of this discussion here so of course as I could see here I gotta go from here to there so somehow I need to find you know uh, interconnecting different tunnels to get there so this is part of a ring number one so let's pick uh, ring one right here and let's uh, select uh, sub ring number two right here there you go, subring number two, subring number six, I see is going to be needed. Finally, let's use the uh, tie here between 50-40 and 60-60 right there. And uh, last step is ring number five. Let's take a look at the overall picture. And there we have it, the two endpoints. And basically, uh, three uh, number of different tunnels connected through virtual um, forwarding instances. The next step is uh, this is going to be a low priority. Uh, let's say it's going to be all large frames. And we said this was going to be a 20 meg. So either we're going to give 20 meg to the end user or we're we going to like uh, use 20 meg on MPLS and it depends it's who's going to pay the tax here because obviously it's going to be overhead. But uh, let's be generous and let's give the end user here, so it's endpoint base, and we're going to give the end user 20 meg of uh, throughput. So effectively what he's going to see is basically that we're going to assume the overhead. So this service is going to consume 
more than 20 meg on the on the core network but the end user is going to see 20 meg service all right next the uh, pseudo wire labels are uh, assigned here's an overview of what we're doing and it's showing me basically a node 1120 interface 3 port 4 going to this particular 5010 across these different tunnels and it's showing you basically uh, the amount of bandwidth that's going to be consumed across the network and we're satisfied with this sort of wire labels and finish alright now if we go back to the actual network and uh, we highlight this 20 meg service there it is so from here to there going across this sort of highlighted yellow section of the network across multiple tunnels and the tunnels are shown here uh, that are used so as we can see the 20 meg service is going across ring 1 sub ring 2 6 ring 5 and the tie right there that's showing right here and uh, we could certainly highlight this uh, here another good way to look at it is um, if you want to see what tunnels are being used is this view right here so what is showing me is basically that we have a 20 meg uh, Ethernet that's using ring 1 2 sub ring 6 the tie ring 5 and it's basically using all the various links that I'm showing here and going across all these nodes so this graph here is a way to show you the relationship between nodes tunnels uh, links and so on alright hope you enjoyed this